In this video, we're going to focus on atomic radii and ionic radii. So what you need to know is that atoms, they get smaller as you go to the right, and they get bigger as you go down. So atomic size, or atomic radii, increases as you go this way in the periodic table. So as you go to the left, the atom gets bigger, and as you go down, they get bigger. So let's understand why. So in the periodic table, we have elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So why is that carbon is much bigger than nitrogen, and nitrogen is bigger than oxygen, and oxygen is bigger than fluorine? Why is it that atomic size decreases as you go to the right? Well, let's compare nitrogen and oxygen. Now, nitrogen has an atomic number of 7 and a mass number of 14. Nit and oxygen has an atomic number of 8 and a mass number of 16. Oxygen has 8 protons, nitrogen has 7. The number of protons is the same as the atomic number. So, as you go to the right, the number of protons increases. And there's something called effective nuclear charge that goes up as well. And so as you go to the right, the effective nuclear charge increases, and that causes the atomic size to decrease. The more protons you have, the protons exert a pull on the electrons. They, they pull the electrons towards the nucleus, making the atom smaller. So let's um, calculate the effective nuclear charge for nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen has seven protons in its nucleus, so the nucleus has a charge of seven. And the first shell has only two electrons. These are called core electrons. Nitrogen has a total of seven electrons, by the way. In the second energy level, it has five electrons. Because these are the outermost electrons, they're called valence electrons, electrons in the last shell. Now, if we calculate the effective nuclear charge on the the second shell electrons or the valence electrons, the effective nuclear charge is equal to basically the atomic number, which has a charge of 7. And you have to subtract that by the number of core electrons. So there are two electrons that shield the outer five electrons from the nucleus. So it's going to be 7 minus 2. So each of these outer electrons, they feel an effective nuclear charge of 5. Now for oxygen, Oxygen has eight protons, and it still has only two energy levels. In the first shell, like nitrogen, it's going to have two electrons. So it has two core electrons that shield the outer valence electrons. It has a total of eight electrons, so six of them are valence electrons, two are core. So the effective nuclear charge for oxygen, it's going to be the number of protons that it has, or the atomic number, which is 8, minus the two core electrons. So the valence electrons, they fill an effective nuclear charge of plus 6. So because there's more protons in a nucleus, the electrons are attracted to the protons. So they're pulled, they feel an inward force that pulls them towards the nucleus. And so the electron cloud, it shrinks, it becomes smaller. And so that's why, as you go to the right, the atoms, they decrease in size because of the increase in effective nuclear charge. So that's why oxygen is smaller than nitrogen. It has more protons, and it has the same number of energy levels, which is two energy levels, or two shells. Now what about as you go down? As you go down, atomic size increases. So if we were to compare lithium, sodium, and potassium, potassium would be bigger than uh, sodium, and sodium is bigger than uh, lithium. Now let's understand why that's the case. So let's compare lithium and sodium. Lithium has three valence electrons, and it has three protons. Well, it has three electrons total, one valence electron. I want to make that correction. In the first shell, it has two core electrons, 
and in the second energy level, it has one valence electron. So it has three electrons in total. Keep in mind, for an atom, the number of electrons and protons in an atom are always the same. But in an ion, you have an unequal number of protons and electrons. So lithium, which is in group one, has one valence electron, but it has a total of three electrons. Now let's go ahead and calculate the effect of nuclear charge. It's going to be 3 minus the two core electrons, so the effective nuclear charge for lithium is plus 1. Now sodium has 11 electrons, and it has 11 protons, which is the charge of the nucleus. In the first energy level, sodium has two core electrons, and in the second energy level, it has eight electrons. These are also considered core electrons as well. And in the last energy level, it has one valence electron. So because lithium and sodium are in the same column, they both have one valence electron. They're both found in group 1A of the periodic table. And if you calculate the effect of nuclear charge on this particular valence electron, it's going to be the 11 protons minus the electrons that are between the valence electron and the nucleus. So there's 10 core electrons that shield this electron from the nucleus. So it's going to be 11 minus 10. So notice that the effect of nuclear charge is the same for elements in the same group. So effect of nuclear charge is not the reason why sodium is bigger than lithium, because they have the same effect of nuclear charge. The key here is the energy levels. You can see that sodium has three energy levels, whereas lithium has two. The more energy levels that you have, the bigger the size of the atom. And so that's why sodium is bigger than lithium. And that's why atomic size increases as you go down, because as you go down to a new row, you're adding a new energy level. And so the atoms get bigger, because the atom expands adds, as it adds electrons to new energy levels. And so that's why sodium is bigger than lithium. So not because sodium has more protons, but because that it has more energy levels. So now let's compare an atom and an ion. So let's compare the sodium atom and the sodium plus cation. A cation is simply an ion with a positive charge. Now, sodium and the sodium cation both have 11 protons in a nucleus. However, sodium has 11 electrons. We know that there's going to be two in the first shell, eight in the second, and one in the outer shell. Well, the sodium plus cation doesn't have 11 electrons. It lost one. And so anytime an atom loses an electron, it gains a positive charge. And so the sodium cation only has 10 electrons. So notice that it lost an energy level. So because the sodium cation has one less energy level, it's smaller. Cations are usually smaller than their parent atoms because they have less electrons. And also, if you calculate the effect of nuclear charge on these outer electrons that exist for the Na plus cation, it's significantly higher. We said that the effect of nuclear charge for a uh, valence electron in sodium was plus one, but for these electrons here, it's going to be the charge of the nucleus, which is 11, minus the two core electrons. So the effect of nuclear charge is now nine. So it's much higher. So keep this in mind, the cations are usually smaller than apparent atoms because they have less electrons and less energy levels. Now what about anions, negatively charged ions? Let's compare oxygen and oxide. Oxygen has eight protons, and the same is true for the uh, oxide ion. So in the first energy level, we said that oxygen has two electrons. And in the second energy level, it's going to have six valence electrons. 
So for an atom, the number of protons and electrons are the same. That's why atoms are electrically neutral. But for an ion, to calculate the number of electrons, it's going to be the atomic number, which is 8, minus the charge. 8 minus negative 2 is 10. So the oxide ion has 10 electrons. Now, notice that the number of energy levels is going to be the same. However, the oxide ion is bigger. Why is it bigger if it, if it only has two energy levels? We know that cations, which are positively charged ions, they're smaller than apparent atoms because they have less electrons and the same number of protons. But, the, but anions, which are negatively charged ions, they're bigger than the parent atom. One reason is they have more electrons. Here, this has 10, and this only has uh, 8 electrons total, and the number of protons are the same. Anytime you add more electrons to an atom, it's going to increase in size. The question is why? Well, electrons, are they attracted to each other, or do they repel? If you put two negatively charged particles next to each other, what's going to happen? They're going to move apart, because like charges repel, opposite charges attract. So if these electrons are moving apart from each other, then they're going to expand. They're going to move away from each other. That's why the oxide ion gets bigger as compared to its atom. As you add electrons to oxygen, the electronic cloud expands because of electron repulsion. The valence electrons, they, re they repel each other, so it gets bigger. So what you need to keep in mind is that cations are smaller than apparent atoms, and anions, which are negatively charged ions, are bigger because they have more electrons and they repel each other and causing the electron cloud to expand. So now let's see if we can put this all together. So we said that for atoms, atoms get bigger as you go down the periodic table. So lithium is relatively small, sodium is bigger, and potassium is even bigger. Now, as you go to the right, the atomic size decreases as well. So, to the right of sodium, we have like magnesium, and then you have aluminum, and then silicon. So, magnesium is going to be uh, smaller than sodium, and aluminum is smaller than magnesium, and silicon is even smaller. So, as you can see, atomic size increases as you go down, and it decreases as you go to the right. Now, what about ionic radii? Well, it follows the same trends. So, as you go down, the ions will get bigger because there's more energy levels. So, the potassium ion is going to be bigger than the sodium ion, which is bigger than the lithium ion. But now, what about as you go to the right? So what about like Mg plus 2, Al plus 3, and then we have elements like um, phosphide, sulfide, and fluoride. For ions, do they follow the same trend as we go from left to right? The answer is yes, with a few minor details. So, sodium is bigger than magnesium, which is bigger than aluminum. So, ionic radii decreases as you go to the right. Because as you go to the right, keep in mind, the effect of nuclear charge is increasing because you have more protons. However, the energy levels doesn't increase as you go to the right. Sodium, magnesium, and aluminum, as an atom, they have three energy levels. As an ion, they have two. But if you compare them just ions, they all have two energy levels. So if you have the same energy level, and you're, if you're increasing the number of protons, then the effect of nuclear charge will increase, and the ion will decrease in size. So anytime you go to the right, the number of energy levels stay the same. So the size decreases due to the increased number of protons and the increase in effect of nuclear charge. But as you go down, even though the number of protons is increasing, the effect of nuclear charge stays the same, 
but the energy levels is increased, and so that's why it gets bigger. But now, what happens when we cross from the cations to the anions? When we go from the positively charged ions to the negatively charged ions? Now keep in mind, cations are smaller than neutral atoms for the most part. And anions are bigger than neutral um, atoms because they have more electrons. So there's going to be a huge jump in size. Phosphide is huge, significantly bigger than almost any cation. Most anions are generally bigger than cations, generally. There might be some exceptions, like if you compare a, a small anion here versus a large cation here. The cation may win. But on the same level, on the same row, the anions are usually much more bigger than the cations. So due to electron repulsion, phosphide is huge. Now, sulfide is not as big as phosphide, but it's still pretty big. And fluoride is smaller, but it's still pretty big compared to the cations. So as you can see, as you go to the right, it still decreases. But as you go from uh, the cations to the anions, it's going to jump in size. So as you go from the aluminum plus 3 ion to the phosphide ion, it's going to temporarily get bigger, and then it's going to decrease again as the effective nuclear charge increases. So fluoride, which has more protons than phosphide, is smaller because the protons, they're going to cause the electrons to come towards the nucleus due to the increase in effective nuclear charge. And phosphide and fluoride have the same number of energy levels. So as you go to the right, it's due to the increase in effective nuclear charge. So ionic radii follow the same trend as atomic radii. Just keep in mind, though, as you cross from cations to anions, it's going to get bigger, but then it's going to continue to decrease as you go to the right. So hopefully, these visual circles help you uh, to see um, the relative sizes of these ions and uh, how they relate to one another. So that is it for this video. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it um, to be educational, and uh, take care.